I played with ChatGPT when it was first launched and I was shocked by how good it was. Now GPT-4 is available, the next iteration of the large language model used by ChatGPT, and I have been just as shocked at how much it has improved. So I'm first going to show you exactly what caused me to have this reaction and then explain why I will not be incorporating GPT-4 into my everyday workflow. Okay, so how is it that GPT-4 was able to do 85% of my work for me? This was the initial thing that shocked me. Every video I have created for the past year or two has a script. Here is the script for the video you are watching right now. Generally, I stick to the script quite strictly, mostly because it stops me rambling and wasting your time. The cool thing about having scripts like this is that it's pretty close to being a blog post as well. And who wouldn't want the extra SEO juice a blog post brings when you've already done most of the hard work of creating the content already. But a video script is not a blog post. The tone and structure is different and I'm referencing things that are appearing in the video. I could reasonably easily convert these scripts to blog posts with around a couple of hours of work per script. And that is something I have been intending to do for about a year now. But as you may have guessed, I had not done that. And I had about 30 video scripts just waiting in the backlog. So I already had the idea to have the original ChatGPT do this for me when it first came out, but the results were far from what I wanted. An important aspect of this is that I want the blog post to stay as true to the script as possible. I don't want ChatGPT making up its own blog post based on the topics I talked about. I want it to be my own structure, phrasing and wording as much as possible just cleaned up and translated into more of a blog post style format. I couldn't seem to get that with GPT-3, but when I tried this again with GPT-4, the results were very good, even with minimal prompting effort on my part. For example, take a look at this snippet from a video script and what GPT-4 produced as a result from the same section. This is exactly what I wanted. In this case, the phrasing is still entirely my own which for now at least is where I think the value is in my content over what ChatGPT would produce on its own. But although it did generally adhere to my wording as much as possible, the content as a whole had been modified into a blog post just as I wanted. Sections were deleted, headings were added, some were summarized slightly, generally references to the video were removed, and it either inserted code snippets for me or added placeholders for me to fill in if there wasn't enough context in the script. Now a task that would have taken me an hour or two per blog post turns into a much quicker and less mentally taxing task of spending maybe five to 10 minutes reviewing the content ChatGPT created, tweaking a few things and adding some code snippets and so on. So what's the problem? Doesn't this sound great? In this case and some others, I think it definitely is. I will absolutely be using this to turn my videos into blog posts for me, but I think we need to be careful about when and where we use it. My primary work involves a lot of coding and I have intentionally not been using ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot for coding generally and I don't see that changing anytime soon. It's not because I don't think GPT can produce good code, it absolutely can with certain limitations at the moment. And it's not because I am afraid of the robots taking over or that I'm unwilling to adopt the future of technology. The reason I'm not using it is because without being very disciplined and intentional with it, I feel the price I might be paying is stagnating as a software developer and becoming worse in the areas where humans still have an advantage over AI, at least for now. This isn't to say that I think everyone who is using AI assisted coding is doing it in a way that is detrimental to them. Some people I think are doing it very well. Uh, the Primogen is a great example of this and I will link to his video in the description. So let me give you an example of what I think is a problem and then I'll explain my thinking more generally. So I came across this little Angular challenge on Twitter. I won't bore you with the details, but it would have involved at least some level of serious thinking and brow furrowing to come up with a good solution. On a whim, before even trying it myself, I decided to see what answer GPT-4 would give, and naturally it solved the problem in a matter of seconds. I can look at the solution and maybe build on my knowledge base somewhat as a result, but it would be nothing like having attempted that challenge myself. So why is this a problem? If AI can solve a problem more quickly, shouldn't we just get with the times and use it? One problem with that is that at the moment, AI assisted coding quite frequently introduces hard to discover bugs and problems, so you can't just blindly throw it at every problem. But even if AI could generally write perfect bug-free solutions for isolated problems like this, I still think it would be a bad idea to rely on it. So let me try to explain my thinking here. 
The best metaphor I can come up with is to contrast it with relying on GPS for navigating, which like a true millennial, I do just about exclusively. GPS can generally navigate you perfectly and efficiently to any destination you choose. Sure, you could say something valuable has been lost relying on GPS too much, but except for very rare circumstances, it doesn't matter in a practical sense. GPS generally does the job well, it's convenient, and I can almost always use it. However, and this is where my metaphor gets a little convoluted, so stick with me here. Imagine that the knowledge of how to navigate to the place you just went to impacted your decision-making process of where you should go next. Or maybe a month from now, the navigation knowledge from that trip would help your decision-making process on the current trip. The GPS will get us where we want to go, but we still need to tell it where to go in the first place. If you rely on the GPS, you aren't building navigation knowledge and your ability to decide where you should go next will not be improving much. But that is silly, and this isn't a problem with GPS outside of this hypothetical because your ability to navigate has nothing to do with deciding where you should go next. That is not the case with coding though. Your ability to understand the concepts and context of the code you are working on will very much affect your ability to decide what should be worked on next or how it should be created. Even if AI could perfectly code whatever you ask it to, it is of little use if you don't know where to point it or what to ask of it. And this becomes more relevant in more complex systems. That is what I worry about with integrating AI into my everyday coding workflow. By letting it take the wheel too much, I would be missing important connections and context to make better decisions about my code and to improve more over time. It would be especially tempting to use it in the situations where this would matter the most, situations that you're not sure about, situations where you have to think more. Will you take the time to learn yourself, spending maybe minutes or hours to build new and important connections and to get better at understanding the broader context and where to head next? Or do you have a deadline coming and so you will use the tantalizing AI solution that is just sitting there waiting to be accepted? We can always just learn later, right? For now, at least, we still need to tell the AI where to go next. That seems to be the role that humans will play in coding until and if AI does reach the point of being able to replace us completely. I think if we rely on it too much right now, we will produce worse code overall, as we will be worse at steering the ship if we aren't doing at least some of the challenging parts ourselves. By relying on it too much, we will be getting worse at the key thing where human coders still have a competitive advantage and where I think we are likely to keep that advantage at least for a little while longer. All right, that's it from me. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you found this video interesting at all, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope you stick around for the next one.